Coach, let's talk about building a staff. And let's start the conversation with hiring a coach that's never worked for you before. How do you go about that interview process, calling for recommendations? And that's what happens to a lot of guys. You know, early in my career, I really didn't have to do that because I really hired, I used to call them the all-star staff, hired people that I knew or I knew that were on that staff and I had great insight. You know, at times I'd receive incredible phone calls, you know, phone calls from people I really didn't know. It was hard for me to trust them. You know, you're talking about, you know, your career as a head coach is only as good as the assistant coaches you can handle. So you do your homework. And and what I ended up doing is if I was going to hire someone that I did never work with previously, or I really didn't know the person, I would look at his coaching tree. And the number one thing I looked for is compliance, you know, just the nonsense of, you know, doing things wrong in recruiting, or I wanted to hire someone that was brought up in the same mentality that I was that uh, no tolerance as far as the compliance issues that and that was number one with me then number two is just I would always look to see uh, just his background you know what what has he done and is he a winner and then I would try to fit the puzzle together you know interesting Jerry that in the old days because recruiting was really more of a, a young man's game and it was just December and January this has become a full-time job you spend much more time nowadays in recruiting than you do in my first staff I put together at Bowling Green, you know, I wanted a couple older guys and I wanted nothing but recruiters. And then as you, you know, as times have changed, you get to a place like Ohio State, all nine guys or 10 guys now, they better be elite recruiters on top of elite coaches. The, the days of saying, well, he's an older guy, he's not going to recruit hard. Those guys don't survive anymore. Yeah, and I can remember the days when the last person you hired was usually the, the young coach. You gave him the tight ends. And you put him in charge of recruiting. I mean, talk about something that would be a recipe for a disaster nowadays would be to hire a young coach, pay him the least amount of money on the staff and say, okay, you're in charge of our talent. Uh, Things have changed pretty drastically. So you've interviewed some coaches that have never worked for you. You've hired them. You've put them together. You put them in a staff room. What's the chemistry? What's the feel? How would you describe your staff as a group? What are you looking for? Well, you're looking for the ultimate puzzle that's put together correctly. And uh, page 15, a lone survivor, I would always share this with our staff. (laughs) On the upper right hand of the the book, Lone Survivor, by the way, I'm a big fan of it. It says the clarity of purpose is inspirational. And I've used that many, many times about the way unit leaders or coaches should handle their rooms, the way the head coach should handle his staff. And that means absolute transparency and clarity on your expectation and no deviation from that. And you don't have time, especially nowadays, you just don't have time to be reteaching. And so that the transparency during the interview process, the expectation level should be exactly as you, that, that guy that sits in your staff room can't be shocked by uh, what, what the expectation levels are. So same with recruiting. We've changed our whole philosophy. You know, the expectation level of the player, that player can't show up on your campus and also be like, well, I didn't know this because that's when you see people transfer. So the clarity of purpose is inspirational. Absolute zero negotiation about the core values and core beliefs of your program. The expectation level better be crystal clear and the term selfless. If you have a selfish staff, Jerry, you know, as well as I do, you're done and you're finished. And so I I tried to do it. I got the older I got, I got much better at that about just making sure I used to tell people it's so crystal clear that it's insubordination if it's not followed exactly the way we expect it to be followed. So you put the staff together, you think everyone is on the same page, and you find someone on the staff that you hired is not on the same page. How do you deal with that situation? Well, it's heartbreaking. And fortunately, I never had. Uh, I, I've had rel- relatively very few of that situation show up. But what you try to do is you revisit with them. You know, the thing you can't do is behind the scenes complain about it, but you got to hit it directly and and demand a change and, and see if they do change and if not then you have to make a change unfortunately uh, i've only really fired one guy in my career and i try to make it as transparent as possible um never you know the great leaders i've been around great coaches they never lower their expectations and a lot of times coaches will leave and i've encouraged you know i've encouraged a handful to move on and and you know uh, same with i've done with players before this just isn't for you will help you move on because the alternative is really rough. And that's when you have to fire people and make them uproot their families. But either they change or they don't. If they don't, then we try to make it to the point where we help them move on. 